Welcome to the Escape the Drift podcast. I am Dr. Jacob Egbert, and today's topic, top of the food chain. So I chose this topic because it's something that came up the other day when my wife and I were talking about t-shirt ideas. Now, we're not starting an apparel company by any means, but we wanted to offer a few t-shirts for those people that are in our coaching group, as well as want to support the Your Human Experience endeavor. So an idea she had was top of the food chain. Now, for some reason, when I said that, and I, when we were talking about it, and I said top of the food chain, I had this interesting emotional response. Now, it was something internal that kind of like welled up within me, like, yes, top of the food chain. Like, I can identify with that. Now, when I say identify with, in areas of my life, I feel that I've reached the top of the food chain. And in other areas, that is my ultimate goal is to become top of the food chain. Now, there are multiple areas of life where this can be applicable, and you can be top of the food chain in some and not in others. Now, what I want to get to when I talk about top of the food chain, just a little bit of background. Obviously, when you hear that term, there's a biologic or I guess you could say environmental meaning to that. For example, in, in nature, there's a top of the food chain stratification. So you've got lower organisms like, let's say, grasses and, and other non-mobile plants that are eaten by herbivores that go in the graze. And then you've got predators that eat those. So you've got like foxes that eat rabbits. And then you've got bears that eat ungulates or, you know, elk or deer. And there is a stratification there where there's a top of the food chain where there is a, an animal, let's say a bear, for example, in the, let's say the Northern forests or the lion in Africa, which takes the place at the top of the food chain. There is nothing that hunts or consumes that animal. They are the top of the food chain. And so there's always this I guess you could say identification with like, oh, the top of the food chain is the best. Well, not necessarily. It just, nece- it just means that they have no competitors in lower stratus, strata meaning levels. And so top of the food chain in, in our culture, when you take that term from the biological dominance hierarchy and put it into a single species hierarchy, you have a different strata different levels. And so, and of course, in different areas of life. So let's, let's say in business, for example, that's a pretty common one. There is a top of the food chain business. Now there are a number of examples that you could get depending on the, I guess you could say area that you want to discuss. So let's say retail, Amazon, Jeff Bezos, that company is top of the food chain. You know, a second competitor may, might be Walmart. Now why they're top of the food chain is they have the most money the most real estate over the world, the most capacity for delivering in the retail space and the most influence, the most power, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're absolutely without question top of the food chain. Now, what would be the low level? Well, that would be your mom and pop shop or your like startup that's like out of the garage. Like they're bottom of the food chain. They have no position of power. They have no influence. They have no capacity for competition of any significance and therefore the bigger dogs in the fight are going to win if there was a head-to-head competition okay that's pretty straightforward so there's top of the food chain in in organizations so let's say in the corporate setting you've got the ceo or these you know the higher executives that are top of the food chain over the lower levels all the way down the hierarchy of a business in that particular area And then, of course, you've got competition in other areas. Let's say in the apparel space, you've got companies that are like the big top of the food chain players. I don't know any major brands necessarily to reference, but there are many, you know, in makeup and in other, you know, cars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So easy to identify what I'm talking about when I say top of the food chain. Okay, let's take that into other areas. So you've got athletics, physical prowess, physical capacity. Now, 
depending on the sport, you're going to have players at the top of the food chain. So basketball, you know, best example would be like a Michael Jordan, for example. That guy was top of the food chain. You know, he just had the evidence for his capacity. He had the record. He had the dominance on the court that put him in that position. And it's just unquestionable. Similarly, like in business, it's unquestionable that Amazon is at top of the food chain. They have the numbers, they have the presence, they have the record. It just is what's so. Okay, so sports is pretty straightforward as well. There's competition. It's basically a contest like who is top of the food chain, teams, et cetera, et cetera. So those are two areas, physical, financial. Then let's get into relationship. So top of the food chain. Now, this one's a little different. There's a competition in the mating game, we'll say, and that becomes very subjective, that's individualistic and that has to do more with the prey if there's a competition, you know, a hunter prey, which is a silly way to look at it. And that can go both directions, of course. But the, you have this like, I guess, historical term, alpha male, for example. And the alpha male is the dominant specimen within the grouping that is competing for the available females. And so the alpha male moniker largely comes from other natural settings. You know, you've got like the the elk herd and you've got the, the dominant elk, which is the more powerful, the more capable, the one that can fight off literally the other potential mating males to control the harem. And then he's the one that breeds and passes on his genetics. And, you know, in, in the nature setting, that's a very beautiful way of selecting for the more powerful and virile and capable organisms. Okay. Well, in humans, it gets a lot more complex and I'm not even going to suggest that that's the way it works from a physical perspective, but there are so many other factors that play into becoming top of the food chain. And so if you're in a dating setting, you know, I'm not really going to speak to you directly necessarily. And there will be some principles here that may apply but this is going to be more specific to those that are in relationship. So for example, I'm married, I have a wife and we both have had prior relationships. And so we've played the field, as you would say, we've dated other people. We've, we've seen what's out there. And in each of our respective, I guess you could say positions, we became top of the food chain for each other. So she definitely was top of the food chain in my dating pool And I was selected as top of the food chain in her dating pool. So awesome for us. And we're very happy with that. So why I bring that up in relationship now in a marriage setting is this. I want to stay top of the food chain for her. And she wants to stay top of the food chain for me. And how do we do that? So we'll get into that here in a moment. The last area of life, let's say, the spirituality aspect, mindset, how you be in the world, how you control your emotions, how you control the way you see the world. There is a top of the food chain way of being there. And I think this one is more personal. I don't believe that this necessarily has competition aspects with other humans necessarily. I think you can use the example of other humans of how they be in the world as ideals or, or, or targets of how you can also be or operate. But largely this will be how you previously were spiritually, mindset wise, mentally, however you want to characterize this, how you are today and how you want to be. And so part of the things that I do in my meditation training is I I have this module in my program that's called future creation. And it largely goes into the aspect of seeding your mind or your memory with future vision of yourself being in a position or a status or a place in life, having accomplished certain things that you aspire to, that you dream of, that beautiful, perfect day in the future. And you go into these meditations where you vividly experience that day. Now, it's not just the position in life, like, oh, I want to have this house and this car and this accomplishment, et cetera, et cetera. That's part of it. But there's also another component, which I believe is quite powerful and quite beautiful. 
and that is the creation of your higher self. Now, essentially, the higher self is that top of the food chain ideal of you that you can aspire to and become. You set it out there as a target and you visualize it and you see it. And that is your North Star for which you direct yourself. It's your intention. It's the aim that guides your action. And so we get into that in this, this program. But essentially what I want to highlight here is that there is versions of you, past, present, and future, that can become or are top of the food chain. And hopefully not were top of the food chain. And that may be the case. Like perhaps there was a time in your life where you were killing it and you were just spiritually grounded and your mindset was powerful and you've lost that. It's possible. But likely and hopefully we're on a trajectory of progress and growth. But the point being that the top of the food chain title, as it pertains to spirituality or personal growth within, is something that you can assign to yourself based on how you've previously been and how you want to be. Okay, so we have all of these things. Business is a competitive numbers game. You've got the physical domination that you can aspire to. You've got relationship, which is more narrowed down to your mating group, which is whether you're in a dating scenario, it's those that you're looking to suit. Is that right? Pursue, whatever you want to call it. And, or in a relationship, it's your partner. And then of course, the last being personal as it pertains to personal growth. So the top of the food chain, it kind of has this cultural egoic perhaps, or arrogant, um, I guess you could say, I don't know what, what the term would be, but the way that people talk about it, you know, for example, you hear the alpha male and that, that almost is a pejorative. You know, we talk down on excellence or we characterize people that display a certain set of characteristics as a negative, like they're brash and arrogant and, and cocky. And we call that alpha. Well, no, there's so many ways to look at this differently. And those terms, unfortunately, get lumped on those particular people. And usually it's people who are like, I'm alpha, you know, I'm an alpha male, whatever. That's not what I'm talking about today. Top of the food chain is more of a, a term that I want to use as an as aspirational position. Now, the reason I use that, and it became somewhat emotional to me when it was brought up the other day, is that I've been in this mindset recently where I have been pursuing excellence. Now, I've oftentimes said this, and my wife and I talk about this all the time, our good enough has often been excellent in the eyes of those around us. Now, for example, I'll go back to my academic career as a student. When I was in college, for example, I did very well. I was top of my class in most classes, and I earned an academic ranking that allowed me to go into medical school and become a physician. Okay, fine. My study or academic efforts in college were not something I'm proud of. At the time, I was proud because I'm like, ah, I can wake up and read three chapters in physics and go and ace the test. Okay, cool. But I was not pursuing excellence. My good enough getting by got me top of the class. Pat on the back, walk away. Now, you know, there's different ways to look at that. Like, great, it freed up time and I was able to pursue other interests. And at the same time, I was shorting myself. And this comes back to a, a quote I heard recently, and I, I don't know the exact quote, but it's something to the effect of, if you're not living, let me say this differently, it was Andy Frisella, who's at a, at a meeting that I was at the other day. And he said, if you're living to a lower standard than what you're capable of, you're losing. And that was such a beautiful thing, it just hit. If you're living to a lower standard than you're capable of, you're losing. And so when I look back on my life, like, yeah, I got top of the class in my score on my test, but I was living to a lower standard than what I was capable of. And this was brought to my attention recently. A friend of mine at jujitsu the other day, he was like, you know, you have missed class periodically. You're, you know, you, you've taken time off weeks at a time and you still come in and you're just so good. He's like, what could you be if you were consistent? And like, that just hit me inside. Like, I, like I'm doing it again. I'm, I'm doing the good enough, which gives me great results. 
to the standards around me, but it's lower than what I'm capable of. It's a lower standard than what I'm capable of. And so in my pursuit, you know, that hit me. So I'm, I'm turning the tables here. I'm pushing myself to see what I am capable of, what I am capable of. So I'm, I'm shifting my gears toward excellence in that regard. No longer am I going to skim the chapters before the test. My approach is going to be, I'm going to know this so well that I could teach the class because I'm capable of that. And that's more of a metaphorical example. But what is it that I'm capable of? Can I become top of the food chain? Can I become the most successful at the art that I'm pursuing? Of course I can, because that's what I'm capable of. And if I don't pursue that, if I don't live to that standard, I lose. So my objective is to become top of the food chain in all areas of my life. I will be the most perfect partner for my wife in all areas, physically, emotionally, support, parenting to our child, to my step or sorry, my kids, her stepkids, but our combined family, our extern, extended family relationships. Like I'm going to be that person that meets the criteria for top of the food chain in that relationship. And I'm going to be top of the food chain in my business. Now, what does that mean? I'm going to pursue my business ruthlessly to the best of my capacity. I'm going to seek excellence in order to become top of the food chain in my area of practice. My body, I am going to see what I am capable of. I'm going to live to the highest standard that I am capable of in order to win. Now, my top of the food chain physically, like I'm 44. I'm not going to compete like I do jujitsu. I compete in jujitsu. I'm not going to go compete against the young guys. It's just mechanically and like tissue wise impossible. I will never be top of the food chain overall, but I will be top of the food chain in my category, my age group, my weight class, my belt class. I will win the world championship next year because I'm creating it as my future. And so now that I've declared that publicly now, there's work to do. I know the path to follow to get there in order to become top of the food chain in that area with my wife. I know what it takes to become top of the food chain. We discuss these things openly, regularly. I know what she needs me to be. And I'm not there currently in all areas. Like I have work to do and I'll always have work to do, but the pursuit of becoming that top of the food chain position is where I'm going. Okay, spiritually, personally, personal development. I have a higher self created. I know what my 70 year old wise self has become. I have created that person. I know where I am aiming. And I know that that top of the food chain person exists. And I have the path laid out in front of me to achieve that. Okay. Lastly, physically, we talked about this from jujitsu. We talked about this with relationship but physically outside of just jujitsu. So that's a, a pursuit, but physically I'm going to be top of the food chain. When I walk in the room, I want to turn eyes because I am exceptional. Why? Because I can, we all can, you can, you can become so good that people are like, what are you doing? Become top of the food chain. Now there are three components of being top of the food chain that I want to highlight here. Three things. One, it's an attitude. This is the I am top of the food chain attitude. Like when she said that and I said it to myself, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's me. So the attitude of top of the food chain, it's a confidence, it's, it's a dominance. And it's not, it's not a, a taking over someone else necessarily. It's not the point. It's more to stand tall and be the best version of yourself. Top of the food chain. No one's taking your place. You're going to protect yourself. You're going to eat. 
Okay, that's the attitude. It's a way you carry yourself. Next, it's an identity. And these are very closely related. The identity of, I can see myself as top of the food chain. I can see myself as the higher self. I can see myself as the winner. And as you identify as top of the food chain, you deserve to be there. And you see yourself as like, that's my place. I am the top of the food chain. So you have the attitude that carries you in the room and you have the identity that is deep within. And lastly, there are, there are top of the food chain actions. There are things that top of the food chain people do. So with that attitude and identity, you can take actions to be, actively be top of the food chain in your physical pursuits. It's commitment and consistency to your diet and exercise program, sleep regimen, supplementation, whatever it is that you know your body needs. Perhaps it's seeking out a personal trainer, a guide, a health coach, somebody that's like, that can get you to that edge to where you become top of the food chain physically. You take up a pursuit. You're like, okay, I'm going to do jujitsu. I'm going to do you know, whatever running goal you have, 5K or whatever, like be the best at it within your category. And then there are other actions related to, to a relationship, for example. I hinted to this earlier with my wife. Like we talk regularly about what her needs are. We talk about what my needs are. She's on the same pursuit, supporting me, providing the things that I need in order to feel loved and and in relationship and partnership. Okay. Business. What are the actions? What is the identity? Do you see your business as the best it could possibly be? Do you envision it? Do you see all the details that are your future business? When you show up for a pitch or a meeting or to sell or to perform it, your business, do you walk in the room as top of the food chain at whatever it is you do? Because you have to do three things here. First, you have to see it, visualize it. Then you have to be it. You just be it, you emanate it, you walk in the room as though you are it, you be it. And then you do it. You take the action. So the areas of spirituality, personal development, are you doing the things that are required to become top of the food chain version of yourself? Have you done the exercises to visualize who you are in the future, that higher version of yourself, that higher self? Do you meditate on what you could accomplish? Do you have come? communication with that higher self for guidance? Are you constantly looking at the areas of your life where you're like, that doesn't work, that does. Let's emphasize the things that do and decrease the things that don't. So to review, this is the challenge. It's to look at your life in all areas. To become top of the food chain financially, physically, in relationship, and internally, personal development. Walk in the room in all of those areas as though you are top of the food chain. Identify as, deserve it, be it. That is your place. That's your place. When I sit down at this table, this is my dinner table I'm in my dining room. I sit at the head of the table. And this is my place. My kids come over and one of them sits here. It's like, uh-uh, out. And that is my seat because I am top of the food chain. I have a partner that shares that position, but it, she prefers to sit here. And that's her place. That's her top of the food chain position. I identify as that. I deserve it. This mine. And I have this place in all areas. Like if, if I'm out with my wife, she's mine. I'm hers. When I go to the gym to work out, like when I look in the mirror, like this is mine, I've, I'm, the, I'm the top of the food chain. And then I do what it takes to deserve it, to live into it, to become it. So the in invitation again, 
Look at those areas of your life. See yourself as top of the food chain. Act as though you are top of the food chain. Identify as slash deserve to be top of the food chain and then do what it takes to get there, to stay there, to exceed and excel from where you are. And that is top of the food chain. Escape the Drift Podcast. I'm Dr. Jacob Egbert.